كان مثل الإسلام أيام عمر مثل امرئ مقبل لم يزل في إقبال فلما قتل عمر أدبر فلم يزل في إدبر صبح بدا نور ظهر نجم وشمس وقمر ألقى على الدنيا الدرر هذا عمر هذا عمر كل البرايا تنتظر أيامه البيض الغرر كي تستفيد من العبر هذا عمر One expansion in the time of the Prophet ﷺ. After the seventh year of Hijrah, when the Muslims took over the Battle of Khaybar, and they have a, a lot of wealth that came to them, the Prophet ﷺ actually in his lifetime expanded the masjid once. And he expanded the masjid towards the east, this way. Okay? And he expanded it uh, actually uh, to the east and to the north. So, as you can imagine it, there's a picture here. Basically, The yellow. Yellow. North, north and the east. So the Prophet Sallam expanded the, the masjid during his time in the seventh year of Hijrah. Then Umar expanded it in the same direction east and north. Okay? South is this way, so north and east. And that was in the 17th year of Hijrah. And then in the 29th year of Hijrah, Uthman anhu expanded the masjid. And Uthman was expansion uh, is where the Imam currently prays. It's that gray dome. See where there's a green dome? The Prophet where he's buried? The gray dome. The gray dome is where the Imam prays. That's the Musalla uh, or the Mihrab of Uthman. So Uthman led the prayer there. And also for the men, One thing uh, uh, that's very special is if you walk through Bab Salam, this first door, and you walk all the way down, uh, when you reach the place where the Imam prays, and you stand in the middle of the pillars, and literally in the middle, where there's a pillar on your right, and the pillar on your left, and in front of you is the uh, the Mihrab of Uthman radiallahu anh, you're standing where Umar radiallahu anh used to lead the prayer. That was the mihrab of Umar. Obviously, you can't have a markation now, but Umar radiallahu who prayed there, and Umar radiallahu who actually was assassinated there. He was leading Fajr Salah, and a Persian uh, fire worshiper who was a slave came into the masjid and pretended to pray, and he had a dagger which was poisoned, and he hit one of the best companions of the Prophet وسلم, the second best companion out of all the companions, Umar radiallahu. He killed Umar radiallahu anhu and he started bleeding and he was taken away and the effects of that poison was reaching his body and he was laid to rest, he passed out. And his hole where he was taken to was, if you look straight back behind me, you will see small white pillars. Small white pillars, do you see them? Yes. Okay. The one that's closest to the left, The small white pillar closest to the left, in front of that area, was the home of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anh. Umar ibn al-Khattab, as down one of my favorite companions, the second Khalifa of Islam. Umar radiallahu anh was a man who stood for the truth at all times. When he was leaving Mecca, most of the companions left without announcing it, they hid. He announced to everybody, he said, if anybody wants their mother to lose their son, follow me behind this valley. And he was carrying his armor. Nobody dared to say anything to Umar radiallahu And the, the Prophet sallallahu himself, he made dua and he said, Oh Allah, grant victory to Islam with the Islam of one of the two Umars. One of them was Umar al-Khattab, the other Umar was Umar ibn Hisham, whose name was Abu Jahl. Abu Jahl. So the Prophet actually was making dua, Oh Allah, whoever you see more beneficial to Islam, either Abu Jahl or Umar ibn Khattab. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose Umar ibn Khattab to accept Islam. 
And they said when Umar ibn Khattab accepted Islam, it was a conquest by itself. It was a victory by itself. Because it gave so much power to the Muslims. Umar ibn Khattab was buried there. Excuse me, sorry. He lived there. And his home was 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 called Dar al Qadha. Not Qadha as in uh, judiciary, not Qadha as in like uh, judge, being a judge, but Qadha as in law. He actually put his entire house on uh, on basically uh, what you could say ransom in case that he died and he had a loan upon him, that they sell his house and they pay off his loans. And Umar al Khattab, when he became Khalifa, if you think of Umar al Khattab, you think of a person who was had a, a very strong demeanor to the point that when the women would have their session with the Prophet وسلم, and he was teaching them and they would ask him in a very serious manner when Umar walked in they immediately would cover themselves and like walk away as fast as possible and they would say Ya Umar you're scaring the women <laughs> but Umar had that kind of personality to the point that when he became Khalifa some of the people in Medina started saying Umar was very strong had a strong demeanor when he was uh, under the Prophet وسلم, and under Abu Bakr the Khalifa. So he's going to be strong against us, he's going to be harsh against us. So Umar who got up on the member of the Prophet وسلم, and he said, I hear people in Medina saying things. They're saying that I'm going to be very harsh when I'm, I'm the Khalifa. And they're right, I am going to be harsh. And everybody started being scared. And he said, I'm going to be harsh against myself to establish justice for those who are weak and and downtrodden. And I will make sure I'm harsh against those who take the rights of others. This was Umar radiallahu Umar radiallahu One day, the Prophet وسلم, had a conflict with, one, with, with his wife. Yes, the Prophet وسلم, had a disagreement with his wife. So he said, I will not come near you all for a, for a month. For a month. Yes, the Prophet وسلم. So he went and he has, there was a place in the, the Nabawi which there was some stairs and it was like a, uh, an apartment uh, above. Okay, in, uh, in the area where the Rola is, there was some stairs and there was a, like a small apartment area. And the Prophet ﷺ, uh, stayed away from his uh, family for one month because of the disagreement that they had. And Umar who when he came and he saw the Prophet ﷺ resting and he saw that he was sleeping on a straw mat and it, it left marks on his side of his body, he started to cry. He said, Oh Rasulullah. He said, Oh Rasulullah, the king of Persia and the king of Rome have better than this. You deserve better. You deserve much better than this. The Prophet وسلم, told, taught Umar a great lesson. He said that, Ya Umar, know that for them is this dunya and for us is the akhirah. Aren't you pleased that for them is this dunya and for us is the akhirah? to console Umar and to teach him a very strong lesson that this hardship that we see is only in this dunya and it's preparing us for the hereafter. Umar he was over there. And one, at one time the Prophet وسلم, saw Umar whose house in paradise he saw, uh, when, when, uh, when he dreamt of it and he saw Umar whose house in paradise and he said, oh, oh Umar, because of your ghila, like your manhood, I decided not to go into your house because I know how much strong of a demeanor you have because of your ghila. Uh, Umar when he heard that he started to cry. He said, Ya Rasulullah, you're shy from me? And he started to cry because the Prophet وسلم, wouldn't enter the ha his house of Jannah. Just thinking of that made Umar, a strong man like Umar, cry. That hands down Umar one of the best people in Islam. One of the people who gathered the Quran and who took part in the and the, uh, the organization and collection of the Quran that we hold now, Umar was one of the people who initiated that as well. And later on,